Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. <coughs> okay, today's session is dedicated to discuss about uh, the solution to uh, a problem given in quiz number three. Uh, so this is due to the request by one of you to show uh, how this problem can be solved due to her uncertainty uh, of her uh, answer. Yeah? So let's uh, look into it in more detail how actually this problem can be solved. And I'm going to go back, go back to basic. What I mean by that, I'm going to use the fundamental concept when uh, I solve this problem. And as you will see, uh, when you go back to the fundamental concept, uh, inshallah everything looks uh, easy and uh, uh, there's continuity with what we have learned uh, during our lecture. Okay, uh, so let's uh, look into the problem 4.36. So this is taken from our textbook, Sadiku, page 175. If you, if you have this particular textbook you can open to page 175 so what given here uh, a circular disk okay so given in this problem a circular disk and then this circular disk as mentioned in the question uh, having radius given as d and the density which is the surface charge density rho s is equal to 1 over r okay so i'm assume uh, r here is referred to cylindrical coordinate eh? so and it's stated in the question that the this itself is located on the xy plane okay xy plane so this should be our x variable y variable and the axis of the disk is coinciding with the z axis of our coordinate system. So, therefore, your problem should be drawn as such. Okay, so if you drew slightly different uh, way, so I have to look into uh, maybe the detailed mathematics that you use in your actual uh, problem solving. But, uh, the one shown here actually the correct version of the graphical representation of our problem so i'm sure you have seen this problem been given before but in another uh, approach where the structure is same but you are requested to determine electric field intensity but whereby in this problem the question asks us to do what find v uh, at position 0, 0, H. So therefore, I'm going to draw, this is my position 0, 0, H. So this is what uh, is being requested by the problem. Okay, so let's uh, try to decide how we're going to tackle this problem. So what it meant by that. So what should be our input in this problem? And what should be the output requested by the problem? So as we can see from the problem, the input given here is the charge is surface charge, rho s. And then the problem requests us to determine the V. Okay, where at 0, 0, H. And from our discussion, the way we interpret the V can either be known as potential difference or absolute potential. So which one should be uh, assume the V to be in this particular problem? Okay, as you can see, the V is referred to only one point in this particular diagram. Therefore, we're going to assume the V in this case representing what is known as absolute potentials. Okay, why? Because we already defined when you want to calculate a V based on one point, 
in our problem, we define that to be absolute potential, where by default, we're assuming the reference is located at infinity. Okay, somehow if you've been asked to find the V between a two point, in this problem that were represented as potential difference. But in this case, we specifically define the V known as absolute potential. So how you can uh, find V from the source? And then from our lecture as well, you have seen the way we can solve for the V, there are many methods. Okay, so let's item, let's uh, list the method, uh, the available method that we can adopt. Okay, the first method that can be used straight from the charge. So we've been informed that uh, can be solved using uh, the equation that we derived together in our lecture, 4 pi epsilon naught r. So because we use this particular equation because the source here is known as continuous charge, okay, and the medium here we assume to be free space as denoted by the epsilon naught. That should be one met uh, a method that we can adopt to find the V from the charge. And then another method that you can use, okay, is by finding the E first, okay? Then we can find the V, sorry, the E from the charge by adopting what we call it to be either Gauss law or Coulomb's law. But since the charge here is not infinite, it's finite. So we can only use to find E from the charge by using Coulomb's law. So once we obtain the E from the Coulomb's law, we can determine the V using the formula V equal to minus E dot DL, okay? But we know that uh, the reference at infinity, and then this is the final destination of your mathematics. Eh? So therefore, this is how we define the limit of integration for E dot DL, because absolute potential, the reference must be located at infinity, as stated in this mathematics. Then you integrate up to the location where you want to find the V noted by the dotted red point here. So therefore, that's how you uh, solve for the V. So there are two methods that you can use. So you decide which one is your preference method. Okay, because should be the answer um, the same by using either method. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to use the first version. Okay, what I mean by first version. So this is our first version. Okay, the red uh, method we can see it as our second version. So you, so I'm going to use the first version because I know that the first version is just uh, one simple mathematic steps. So for the second version, you have to do two steps of mathematical problem solving. So let's let's do the first version now using uh, method one. Okay, so using uh, method, let's say put one here. Okay, to use this method, so we can see from the mathematics is state here, dv equal to dq divide with 4 pi epsilon naught r okay so that should be the standard equation that we should use so now what we have to do the equation must be relate to the diagram again i'm repeating i must relate the equation with the diagram i'm not memorizing anything okay the equation is standard equation the diagram is given specifically for this problem so i must be able to link the standard equation to the given diagram okay so that's what i'm going to do now first i'm going to define what is my dv okay from the diagram i know that the dv is located here okay so therefore in the equations the dv is represented to be at this position that's done the second point the dq i'm going to take my sample so the sample must always be represented the general position of our 
charge distribution. So what we have here, a surface charge. Therefore, I'm going to take sample anywhere on the charge. So a surface charge, I'm going to take sample on the charge. So that should be my sample. So that sample is denoted by symbol DQ. Because I'm using cylindrical coordinate, so I have variable R, phi and z, so I can see from the diagram this particular sample position from the z-axis given by the variable r based on cylindrical coordinate. Okay? And then we know that the height here is given by symbol h because it's requested by the question. So that should be my sample positioning on the diagram. So based on the cylindrical coordinate, I know that where, okay, I'm going to say to myself that DQ in this case should be equal to rho S D S, standard model mathematic representing surface charge model. Okay, and based on our cylindrical coordinate, so again, refer to the diagram, the DS here should be substituted with what? Should be variable R, D, R, D, phi. Because we know that at this particular position, the Z is constant because the Z always value Z equal to zero. And the changing variable will be the R and as well the phi. So therefore, that should be my representation of the DS. Eh? R, D, R, D, phi. So that's done. Okay, so now how about the R here? So the R should be the line joining the DV position and our sample. That should be our R. Okay, and from the diagram as well, the R is given as theorem Pythagoras should be equal to R square plus h squared. Okay, so therefore that's everything uh, determined from our graphical representation. So what we have to do now, therefore, I'm going to see to myself the dv now should be equal to, okay, rho s here should be 1 over r. Okay, that should be represented by our rho s. Multiply with R, D, R, D, phi. That should be uh, rho S, D, S. Done. Divide everything with 4 pi epsilon naught. And then should be R square plus H square. And we can see, we can simplify the mathematics by cancelling the R. Okay, that should be our dv eh? so now what we have to do we have to integrate sum the dv produced by all the sample that can be uh, taken on this charge distribution so now what i'm going to do finally my v now should be equal to i'm going to take out the constant now so my constant are one over four pi epsilon naught I'm going to integrate now. First, with respect to dr, so it should be dr over square root of r square plus h square. That should be the first integration term. Then the second integration term should be d phi. Okay, how about the limit now? The limit now, I'm referring to the diagram again. So, based on the r value, I can change position for this sample from the range r equal to 0 up to d so and then the phi from 0 up to 2 pi okay so now if i want to solve this problem okay this is the term i'm going to solve now so you can use any method that you uh, know so for me i'm going to refer to so luckily I'm being uh, uh, 
uh, I have reference from my textbook. Okay, I'm going to refer to table, uh, page, okay, my textbook now, uh, 844, appendix, okay, A, point uh, eight that should be my reference where from the table i uh, can see the equation given by the table is that if we have dx over the square root of x squared plus a constant let's make the constant to be a squared the solution to this integration will be equal to natural log Okay, and then should be x plus the square root of x squared plus a squared, close bracket, since there's no limit of integration, so the table suggests that we have to add a constant. So that solution given by the table. So I'm going to use this particular integration solution from the table to solve this mathematics. So I can see from this particular substitutions what we can be conclude now. So this should be, okay, finally my V will be equal to one over, because this is going to end with two pi, 2 pi and 4 pi will cancel out to become 2, should be 2 epsilon naught. That should be the first uh, thing I'm going to do, Integrate, integrating the 3, I'm going to get the the uh, uh, 2 pi, okay? The 3 I'm going to get 2 pi, so 2 pi with 4 pi getting 2. Now I'm going to substitute for this term, so I can see this pattern and this pattern uh, is the same. So I'm going to have two solution now. One is zero, one is D. So the one I'm going to substitute is the, the R. So therefore, first the D. So what should be then? Natural log. Okay. D plus square root of D squared plus H squared. That should be the first substitution. When we substitute that, uh, the R is equal to D. And then this minus with the r equal to zero. So what we're going to have ln of h. So that should be the solution of the potential at location uh, zero, zero h due to the charge distribution given by the problem. So as you can see, what is important here for us to identify what type of v for this problem so from the identification, we can uh, take action on the appropriate method in order to get the solution. Okay, hope uh, it's clear to you. Uh, in EMT, no such thing as memorizing solution. Everything can be explained and then everything, inshallah, uh, referred to the basic concept that uh, been discussed in our lecture. With that, I'm going to end my session of solving uh, part of the problem of the quiz number three. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you.